What's up guys? So before this actual Q&A video starts, just want to let you know that this is just part one of two for the Q&A and part two is already out. So as soon as you're done with part one, you can go check out part two or you can check out part two later. But um, just letting you guys know so that you're not confused with the way that this one kind of abruptly ends. I did the first, I split up to the first five questions in part one and the second five questions in part two, just so the video wouldn't be too long. And plus we did get pretty detailed with each question. So it made sense to kind of like split up into two but yeah just letting you guys know that also wanted to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of you for helping this channel reach 9,000 subs you guys already know i appreciate it you already know the same thing i'm going to say because i say it every single time this channel exists for you guys it's to help you guys to educate you guys on health fitness social well-being and i'm just grateful for all of you thank you thank you for taking the time out of your day to like the videos to watch the videos to subscribe to share with your friends it means the world to me Hope you guys enjoy the content and enjoy the video. What is up guys, Marcellus Williams, AKA The Swole Fester, here to educate you on health, fitness, and social well-being. And today I'm here with my boy, David Shelton. I'm gonna let him introduce himself in a little bit, but we're gonna be going through 10 common questions related to powerlifting. Basically what I did guys was I went through my channel, I went through my Instagram page, my DMs, went through all that and took 10 common questions related to powerlifting that I thought would be really good for us to answer together. I've actually wanted to have David on the channel for a little bit now, but I was trying to figure out like the best way to go about introducing him. And I think this will be really good because as we go through these questions, you guys get an idea kind of like, you know, you already kind of know my knowledge base, you get a better idea of David's knowledge base. From there, you guys can request like, hey, we'd like to see you and David do a video over this topic or that topic. And I think it'll just be a really fun way to go about it. But basically, David is a fellow USAPL powerlifter, formerly a 74 kg powerlifter like your boy, but I think he's actually he's actually in the 83 kgs now. He just, yeah. just did his first uh, meet as 83 kg in the Arnold, and you actually did pretty well for your first time. I did, right? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprised so, a few people. Yeah, <laughs> so um, really smart dude, really knowledgeable dude, decent, really um, decent coach, especially compared to a lot of the people that are out there. So I'm gonna kind of let him talk about himself a little bit, and then we're gonna get into these questions. Yeah, like Marcel said, uh, I weighed in for an 83 kg meet, uh, weighed in really light. Uh, first first meet ever, didn't really even cut much weight, just walked in and tried to give it my best go. Uh, I was cutting a lot of weight for 163. Uh, I was weighing in maybe 172, 173 in the morning and cutting into 163. Mm. And it just started not being advantageous. Right. Uh, my total suffered. I didn't have a good time. It was just... <laughs> It all came down to it, and I was like, nah, I'm just gonna go up and do the best I can. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I weighed in about 170. Uh, just cut some carbs the night before because just dropped a little bit of water. Um, and the top of the weight class is 183, right? Right. So you're like 13 pounds under what a lot of the dudes are, yeah. Yep. So I was like flying under the radar, you know, and uh, I squatted a PR 562. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Ah, woo! Uh, my previous gym best was about 550. Uh, bench 391. Which is good. I had been trying to get that for a long time. And I deadlifted 623. Uh, oh, let's go! Easy weight. Uh, so, and that's what it came down to was just not cutting and just having like one of the best meets of my life. So. Yeah. And he did all that at a body weight of 170 pounds. So for those of you who kind of want to know why should you listen to this guy's opinion as far as powerlifting, there's a few credentials right there. But as we get into it, you guys are going to get a better idea kind of like how knowledgeable this guy actually is. So gonna get right to these questions and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So, uh, question number one, do I need a certain base level of strength and muscle mass before I start powerlifting? I'm gonna go ahead and let you start this one off first. As sure, as you're sure. hanging on it, so. Uh, base level of strength and muscle mass. Before they start powerlifting, yeah. Honestly, I mean, if, you, if you've been pushing things just a little bit in the gym, say for even one or two months, powerlifting is like squat bench and deadlift, so. More than likely, if you're going in a strength direction, like those are gonna be the compound lifts you'd be chasing in the first place, mm -hmm. like regardless. Uh, so base level of strength, uh, I would say not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as you can move yourself, 
uh, you, and you can start, and you know yourself enough uh, to be able to move weights. Mm -hmm. uh, you're already pretty much ready to go. Yeah. Um, lifts produce a pretty simple lifts for sure. Yeah, I agree as far as the, with powerlifting, it's kind of like, no matter how strong you get, there is no exact time to start because there's almost always going to be someone who's stronger than you and there's almost always going to be someone who's weaker than you. As far as maybe like, developing a certain bit of muscle mass i could definitely see that like i could see somebody taking time to like maybe just get a power thing after they've been like their first year putting on a little bit of muscle right. mass just because i it, it makes a difference in the long run right i've talked to you guys on this channel about like you know the more muscle mass you have the more force you can produce so if you're like just say like you're a brand new beginner um regardless of what your strength level is but you just don't have a whole lot of muscle mass on you obviously you'll probably have a little bit better of a start if you maybe wait a year after training and get into it, then if you just jump the gun and get right into it. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it's kind of like whenever you feel ready, you want to have fun and get into it. As long as you have the right mentality about it, like David was saying, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to see where you're at and just get better from there. Right. So whenever you first start, I guess, in general, and you're looking at powerlifting as an option, uh, your goal in powerlifting is to lift the most weight. You're going to need mm -hmm. muscle to do that. Exactly. So when you first start, you 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 are going to try and cater more towards your accessories and things like that to build muscle. Actually, exactly. exactly. So you will be pointed in that direction in the first place. You won't be just squat bench deadlift, squat bench yeah. deadlift. Hopefully, right? Like, right. If you have a decent coach, then hopefully, right. Yeah. He'll give you all the accessories to help you build that mass, and he'll assess how advanced you are before he thinks about how much frequency on the main lifts. Uh, uh, if possible, uh, exactly. for sure. Got to build some mass. Uh, you, you can stall out pretty easily, uh, very early on actually, if you don't have enough muscle built. Yeah, and, and how long did you, because like, they know with me, you guys know that I've been doing college for about two going on three years, but I've just been lifting in general for six going on seven, so I had a pretty good base before I got involved in it, but how long were you lifting before you started powerlifting yourself? Well, I had always chased strength in some sort of way, and mm -hmm. I, I really didn't know how to go about it, and I had never heard about powerlifting, mm -hmm. believe it or not, for a while. Uh, did the classic football bro bench, bench and curls. Right. So I'd been benching for about two years, and I was like, okay, well, I've always wanted to do this in a way where I could just bench the most versus my body weight. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the coolest thing to do. Right. When, like, right. I, I wanted to be not very big, but be able to push a lot. Right. And it was, right. was kind of cool. And so I decided, you know, okay, well, I need to take an approach towards this. Uh, and that's, that's what led me into going into more strength related type, type endeavors. Mm -hmm. uh, with squat and deadlift and things like that, so. Got you. So about how long was that before you officially like, did like your first meet, like four years or? Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking, man, I didn't even do my first meet. We're talking, I had started powerlifting for like two, two and a half years before I even competed once. Right. I didn't even want to compete. I was just like, I want to do squat, bench, deadlift, and just get as strong as I can be. And then kind of get into it. Yeah, didn't yeah. even think about competing. Yeah, I mean, so there you go, guys. As far as like powerlifting, as far as focusing on the big three, you, I mean, you kind of start that once you start, but as far as like, hey, when should I do a meet? Give yourself some time, give yourself some years to build some actual strength and muscle mass and kind of go from there. The next question, um, why do so many people use RPE over percentages? So uh, I'll get to the, I'll actually, I'll give my kind of take on this first and I'll let you pick up. So yeah. I'm not one of these people who thinks it's always just one or the other. I, I don't really even think I know too many coaches who do just RPE. I know a lot of coaches who do just percentages, but basically um, for those of you who don't know, RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion. So you guys have seen on my videos, if I say hey, I have a set of two at RPE eight, it means that I have to do like, you know, a set of two with whatever weight's on the bar and hopefully still have two reps left in the tank after I do that too, right? Because RP8, that means that, you know, two away from RP10, so I had two more reps left in the tank. And basically it's just a form of auto-regulation, guys. And it's not something that I push heavily, like, you know, like with beginner lifters or anything like that. But when you kind of get to that intermediate stage or above, whether you're powerlifting or not, some form of auto-regulation is important anyway, just because if you try to stick with these numbers these percentages all the time it's gonna catch up to you eventually like you're gonna have a day where like okay i'm supposed to do like sets of four with 80 percent but i feel like complete garbage so what do you do you lower the weight a little bit right or oh maybe it's a day where you bump the weight up a little bit because you're feeling really good well all you did was auto regulate anyway so rpe is just a better way of going about that it's a better way of forcing you to really learn your body to learn what you respond well to as far as total volume total workload and when you do that in combination with some percentage based programming i think you just get a more optimal result in the long run versus just like hey this is the percentage you're doing on this day regardless of how you're feeling how good you're feeling how bad you're feeling and i feel like it's just a very like 
it's 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 too simplistic. It's to a point where like that works well as a beginner where you can progressively linear, linearly, but as you become more advanced, you have to learn to listen to your body. So what do you think about that, David? Oh, I like that a lot. Uh, and the thing is with RPE and percentage, like RPE is just an auto regulation tool. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta understand that uh, purely basing on percentages has its downfall. Purely basing on RPE has its downfall. Sure. Uh, and what we have to understand is we're trying to put the right amount of weight on the bar at the right time. Mm -hmm. Put too little, you don't get very much out of it. Put too much and you could add stress and fatigue and exactly. you could build yourself to failure. Exactly. So RPE is just a tool that we use to say, hey, you know, how do I feel about this? How did I feel about this? So that we can keep data and things like that. Mm -hmm. How did I, and pretty much saying, hey, okay, well, if I don't feel very good today, then I'm gonna go for a perceived feeling rather than just what was given on a on a straight percentage exactly. uh, basis. Um, it's just data collection exactly. uh, at the end of the day. And it's it's not why use one over the other, it's why not just use both. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like I said, I don't know too many good coaches who don't use both. And it's all about information, guys. That's the biggest thing. It's like powerlifting, believe it or not, there's more to it than just picking the weight up, you know what I mean? Like there's 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 mindsets that go into your training to where you get the most optimal results. So our, I think our mutual answer is that it's not use RPE over percentages, but that use RPE as a great tool with percentages so that you get a more optimal result. The next question, this actually kind of goes back to what we we're talking about with the base level of strength is, is accessory work important for power lifters or should they just focus on the big three? So we kind of answered this one already in the sense of, any power lifter who is trying to maximize their strength is going to have an interest in maximizing their muscle growth, period. And accessory work is just an easier way to, one, get more total volume in without, like, taxing your recovery. Like, let's say we know that, like, um, like oh, you're, like, I struggle with chest gains or something like that, right? Oh, well, just do more bench. Yes, I can do that, but that's probably going to fatigue me way more than if I incorporate, you know, a lighter accessory, maybe incorporate, like, you know, some lighter dumbbell press or something like that that's going to give me more volume in on the muscle group, but not tax me as much as, like, you know, a heavy barbell movement, as well as the fact that accessory work helps us with, like, just staying injury-free, right, in terms of uh, muscle imbalances and things that I've talked about on this channel before. But, Dave, I'm going to go ahead and let you give your take on that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> In, uh, accessory work and and this is a very controversial topic actually whenever a lot of people get to the more advanced stages they're like yeah. do I really need this and yeah and uh, there's a lot of people that go back and forth with this I, I've met some people that are like nah no accessory work we don't need that we just do squat bench and deadlift and if our squat <clears throat> isn't moving we just put more squat in there yeah to squat more right <laughs> and yeah. it's just and and they'll they'll claim that that's the way to go and and things like that um, but my personal opinion, I agree with Marcellus, like really accessory work is one of the most important things to me about staying injury free and staying uh, on track with things for sure. Uh, I, I definitely like putting in accessory work no matter how advanced or how uh, beginner you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything, like I said, like these people that say one is one way and the other is the other way, really I take it individual basis. So exactly. I mean. For example, I was built on accessory work. Like yeah. I did years and years of express, uh, like accessory work before I even got into the big three as a big three thing. So like for me, for example, I wouldn't push as hard on the accessories because I used to be like the best at them. I always would always attack those things. So I don't do as much of it now for sure. And I stay more to the specifics because that's where I can grow the most at the moment. Um, but everything is an individual basis for sure. Sure, and how much accessory work you can do, or and that's how much volume you can handle, is going to vary from person to person. But there's a huge difference between hey, I do this much and you do this much versus oh, I just don't do any at all. Type thing is right. Me. So yeah. exactly. All right, question number four: What is the difference between raw and equipped powerlifting, and which one should I start with? That's good. Yeah, that's real good. Uh, so raw lifting is awesome and equipped powerlifting will wreck your body. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm gonna let David actually start this one off. Go ahead, man. Yeah, 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 uh, definitely. So we need to define what equipped lifting is. We need to define what raw lifting is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that a lot of people think that raw is like naked. Like you're you're pretty much have nothing on you. And yeah. you're like, oh, beltless. Yeah. Oh, no, no sleeves. Yeah, no wrist wraps. No or shoes anything. or anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first, the definition of raw lifting would be you're still allowed to use a belt, you're still allowed to use wrist wraps, you're still allowed to use shoes, and uh, really where the line is drawn between equipped and raw is one is giving you an actual like dynamic 
amount of tension to to enable you to lift more weight mm -hmm. physically and mm -hmm. belts wrist straps things like that they're more of safety tools mm -hmm. helping you reinforce like your lower back and or you know just your wrists mm -hmm. or the the uh less secure parts of your joints and things like that so mm -hmm. uh raw lifting is definitely i don't know what well, most of us lift raw uh usually whenever you want to get into an equip type thing you've already been doing some raw lifting mm -hmm. in the past and you're like okay well i really i want to play i want to do power lifting as as more like i like to think of it as more like a game whenever you get into equipped lifting like it's yeah. just it's yeah. okay well how much can we really do yeah like how much can i really lift if i put this bench suit right. on or these uh these knee these wraps shirts, all these, and... these things that will literally add hundreds of pounds to my yeah. current total yeah right yeah so uh i mean so let me see the rest of the question it was so we're asking oh like what's the difference between raw and which one they which should one start should you with? start so i would always advise just start with raw lifting yeah uh, it's the easiest thing to get into yeah. and i'm telling you right now guys those bench shirts those suits all those things they take a lot of work to put on they take a lot yeah. of they, they take a little bit of experience from the start like you got to really know what you're doing uh before you get straight into it or you need people around you that know what they're doing exactly or else you're gonna load up a ton of weight and you won't have spotters or anything so. yeah for those of you who are like in high school i believe it's equipped automatically still yeah. i don't think they have raw in high school which to me is kind of crazy it's i think weird i think it's weird <laughs> to start with the more difficult way that puts more stress on your body but i guess i get i guess it's because they feel it's a lot easier to teach someone how to properly use a bench suit than to teach them the proper movement patterns for benching yeah, without they, it. But I'm pretty much in agreement with David. I'm a big believer in um, <clears throat> going with raw first. And then if you kind of just want to push it for fun, do equipped. Mainly just because it's safer. One, I like having a true idea of how strong I am. Like, granted, you know, if, you, if you're wearing, like, I've done a video of this before, like, exceptionally tight knee sleeves, like, like two sizes too small for you, you're going to get more rebound out of your squat. You may add 5, 10, 15 pounds to your, to your squat or, you know, obviously, you know how to properly use a belt and really use, um, really brace into that belt. Obviously, it's going to add some weight um, to your deadlift or your squat than what you would get without it. But you're not going to get anywhere near as much out of those things as what you do with, like, a bench shirt or, like, knee wraps compared to sleeves, which can really add, like, 80 to 100 pounds yeah. to your squat. And to me, it's, it's just not worth it. It's like, yeah, you're you're putting, you're, you're reaching these arbitrary numbers or whatever, like you're putting more weight, but at what cost as far as like just, it puts a lot more pressure on your body. Ironically enough, you would think like wearing these suits and stuff protects you, but because of the unnatural positions it puts you in, a lot of the strains it puts on your joints and tendons, it's just not as healthy in my opinion. You're also lo you're also loading more weight than you can handle, like raw. Exactly. So exactly. So exactly. You're raising the standard with the shirt to load on more weight. Exactly. It doesn't make it any safer. It's exactly. Just, it's its own thing. So. Exactly. Um, yeah, I like to think about it that way. And and the question was asking more like which when one you should, start. Yeah, which and, one you should start with. Yeah. Uh, just just try raw. It's legit the easier. It's the easier option just right off the bat. It's cheap. You can do it yourself. Yeah. You can really. There's a lot of raw online resources. Like literally, yeah. whenever I go online, I don't see very much uh, equipped resource. And you usually have to get in contact with somebody that's a lot older that, that that's been doing it for a while. That's been doing it quick yeah. for a while. Raw has really blown up because of this actually. Yeah. Um, just the ease at which you can get started and the ease at which you can get good at this. Yeah. So. I agree. Question number five. Is it true that training like a power lifter will make me fat slash bulky looking? Uh, the uh, quick answer to this is no guys. I've actually, I think I did a video of this like long time ago when I first started this channel. The way you're going to look in terms of like how fat you are is always going to come down to your total caloric intake. Exactly. If you're, if you're <laughs> eating more, then you're going to be bigger or fluffier looking. And if you're eating less, you're going to be leaner. That's regardless if you're a bodybuilder or a powerlifter and like that. Like you can look at a bodybuilder, right, who are known for being really lean. Look at them in their off season. Look at how like big and fat and fluffy some of them look. Um, and then obviously like, you know, David and I, neither of us were relatively lean dudes. We're not like really fat dudes or anything like that. Um, and then another big thing, once again, is like I said, that accessory work. A lot of power lifters, they just eat as much as they can. They only do work on the big three. So a lot of their musculature isn't as developed as what it could be. And this is their folks on just getting bigger to lift more weight. They don't care about what they look like. That's, I don't think there's really much more to say about that. Than no, that right? That's pretty really much isn't. it. I yeah. mean, a lot of people, whenever they get to the higher levels of power lifting, they get to this point where they're like, oh, I could stay in this certain weight class for a little while mm -hmm. and put on this amount of strength, or I could just eat a ton, have that much more energy to go lift. Uh, 
because whenever you do eat more, you will have more sure. to expend and more energy to do more work over time. Sure. It usually aids being a little bit, uh, I'd say not overweight, but just have a little bit more fat on you sure. to be able to have more energy to do work. Exactly. Um, and that's how a lot of people where this is a weight class thing and not a physique type of thing. Right. Where someone's like, hey, you know, like if I'm 178 right now, I could boost my total by this much by just giving a good go at gaining a little bit of weight. Exactly. Sure, some of it will, some of it will be fat, but my total will go way up. And uh, at the end of the day, whenever you look at it, a lot of them are just chasing a total and a, a strength score. So it's not really quite how they look. And that's why you'll see a lot of lifters that are seemingly a little bit fat because sure. that is what has aided them in achieving uh, higher strength scores per their body weight. Exactly. So, but I mean, but even if you look, if you look at the top level lifters in every weight class, except for like the really super heavyweight dudes, they're all lean. Right. Like Russell, um, Taylor Atwood, like they're, they're all lean dudes. All so it's like, especially when they're going based off like, you know, pound for pound strength and will. So no training like a pilot is not automatically going to make you fat. Like yeah. no type of training is going to automatically make you like fat. That just comes down to nutrition. Exactly.